Hey everybody, welcome back to HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com and here on my YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the new features that are in PreSonus Studio One version six. Yes, version six is out, everybody's all excited. There's videos all over YouTube and Uncle Dave will throw his hat in the ring like I do every time Studio One or PreSonus puts out a new version of Studio One. So we're gonna break this down into a handful of different videos. We're gonna talk about three or four features that I really like about Studio One version six. Um, this is probably the most significant upgrade for people like me who do mostly mixing and that kind of thing uh, in Studio One from five to six is probably the most significant amount of features that were added, in my opinion, than it even was from version four to five or from version three to four. So the question is, should you upgrade? Well, if you're into these features that I'm gonna show you over the next several videos, and yes, you should upgrade, it is a great upgrade. It does run really well, and it is really snappy compared to Studio One version five. So check that out. And if you are either new to Studio One altogether in version six is the first time you're checking out Studio One, or whether you're upgrading from an older version to version six, and you are a beginner or someone fairly new to Studio One, I have just released three brand new training courses for the absolute beginner, all done in Studio One version six, the PreSona Studio One Beginner's Guide, mixing in Studio One, and recording in Studio One made easy. You'll see images come up on the screen. Link will be in the description box below so you could check those out. It is the fastest way for you to get up and running in Studio One version six with no fuss and no muss. So be sure you check those out. They are completely brand new courses. Awesome for Studio One version six. We go all over all the features in Studio One version six, as well as some other stuff from the older versions as well. So check those out. So here we are on the start screen in Studio One version six, Professional. I'm gonna show you a Professional. Whether you have Artist or even Prime, it's gonna look very, very similar. So they redesigned. The first feature I like is they redesigned this page a little bit. It looks a little bit more cleaner, a little bit more snappy. I like the news feed. Things are a little bit more well-organized, a little bit easier to read, which I really, really like. But the first thing I really wanna show you is this thing called Smart Templates. I think that's what they call it. At least that's what I'm calling it, Smart Templates. So if you wanna create a new song and you come over here to the top left-hand corner and you click on the new button, we're gonna get this new song dialog box and they've done a much better job reorganizing and laying out the templates that uh, PreSonus has created for you. And they do it in, it did it in a really intuitive way. So at the top, you can see we have record and mix a new song in Studio One, which is basically kind of an empty song template where you can start from scratch and build your own session depending on what you wanna do. However, I highly recommend you check out some of these other smart templates. And I'm gonna show you one in a few seconds here. Uh, one for mastering and release. Um, a new song out of the Studio One project page, which is if you, if you have the professional version, you have the project page. If you don't have the professional version of Studio One, you won't see this choice here. Uh, revert, rehearse and perform, where we have the new Studio One show page, which is great for playing to backing tracks and performing live along with Studio One. Again, in the, again, in the professional version only. Play now, record now, produce beats, all kinds of stuff. I urge you to go through and check those out. And they even had some demo songs here as well. But let's just take one here called uh, Play Now. Click on Play Now. And over here at the top, it gives you some options for you to choose. So Studio One knows what to do as far as laying out the basic session for you so you don't have to add everything manually. So uh, at the top here, we have uh, four tabs. Piano, play, in single, play a single instrument and capture ideas for your next song. Synthesizer, uh, play virtual instruments using Mai Tai guitar, play a real guitar using Ampire, their, their plugin, their amp sim plugin. Drums, play virtual drums using Impact. Okay, so you can choose one of these that is uh, probably the closest to what you think you might want to do. Uh, let's just go to drums just for the heck of it. Uh, down here, we're going to go um, create the song file. Where do you want to put it on your, um, on your system? So we'll go test. I'll just put this on the desktop uh, for now in our Studio One. Uh, where do we have it here? Studio One Six videos here for our tutorial. My interface is 48K. So we're just gonna go fill it out and then just hit OK and watch what it does. This is wonderful and a brand new feature in Studio One version six. First of all, they give you a tutorial on, if you're new to get new to Studio One, how to use this template. And you have six pages on what to do and kind of walks you through as you click through all the different things here, okay? 
for the template that they set up. This is beautiful. If you're new to Studio One and you wanna learn how to get around, this is wonderful. Or you can just close this here at the top. Well, what they've done is they laid out a bunch of tracks based on the template that we picked. They added Impact, which is our virtual instrument here, because we said we wanted to use Impact, the virtual instrument, right? They added uh, a, a drum verb, a re, uh, the mix verb, if you wanted to put some uh, reverb on your drums, they lay out the fat channel here so you can add EQ compression and gating and all that other stuff. They just, it lays everything out perfectly and then you could go ahead and continue to customize this to taste based on your production. They set up all your sends, they do everything. Really, really clever. So all these smart templates actually get you going in the right direction with a little tutorial. Again, brand new to Studio One. I'm gonna say no, uh, version six. That's the first thing that's just awesome. Go through these smart templates here and check those out. I think you'll really like them. And then also you have your user uh, templates here where you can learn how to save a template of your own. If you create a very specific template, you could save it for future use. And again, in the PreSonus Beginner's Guide, I show you how to do that. Okay, next thing that I really like, I use this all the time. It's about time they put this in and this is right over here where we talk about when we want to set up our new song. Let's say you're mixing, you want to import audio into Studio One. So for templates, we're just going to go on the top one here, create a new song. And again, I'll call this test song. Again, I'll put it in my Studio One version six folder here, because that's what we're doing for these tutorials. And I could choose all my sample rate resolution, all of that stuff, tempo, everything. But here's something that's really cool. This is brand new right down here, this little drop files area here. This allows you to import all the audio, again, say you're setting, setting up a mixing session, right from the new song dialog box. Just click on these little three buttons in the top right hand corner. It's gonna come out to your folder. I have all my audio here for this particular uh, session here to show you. So I'm just gonna drag it all, hit open, puts it all right here, right? I hit okay, watch what happens. Lays all the tracks out. All the tracks are named based on your file that you uh, that you use here, your file name. Everything's great. You can go through, you can recolor code everything. Everything is all set up and ready to go, which is wonderful. Before, you would just have a blank screen and then you'd have to go into the browser. You'd have to go to your files menu. You'd have to open up the audio and drag it onto the screen which works really well, but you have like six or seven different clicks you have to do. Now you do it all right from the new song dialog box. Awesome, awesome new feature. I use that all the time. Next feature, once we're on this screen, the one thing that people used to complain about with Studio One, especially new users, people that I would consult with on Zoom and a lot of my private coaching calls is when they first open up Studio One, it could look a little overwhelming. There's a lot going on the screen. There's a lot of buttons, there's a lot of stuff happening. Um, and so again, the PreSonus Studio One Beginner's Guide that I have walks you through all those buttons and what they do. But here's a way to kind of clean up the screen, if you will, for you. If you come up to the right here, uh, up to the top of our edit screen here, and you just right click and hit, and you'll get a little menu now called Customize. And the way you're gonna open up Studio One, it's gonna look like this. It's gonna look like, it's gonna say complete. You're gonna see all the icons across the top of the screen. You're gonna see all the transport along the bottom of the screen. But by right clicking and open, opening up this customization dialog box, you can tell Studio One, what do you wanna see on the screen? And I believe it's a global, a global preset, so it'll always open up that way. So for example, say uh, here on the toolbar at the top, we don't want to see complete. We just want to see the basic controls. Watch what happens to the toolbar at the top of the screen. It minimizes some of the icons, okay? It gets rid of the, some of the stuff and just gives you the basic stuff. Say you want minimal, it shrinks it down even more. Say you want just the audio editing icons, it just gives you the audio editing icons. Or if you want to see everything, you can go to complete. Or you can even go to user defined and you can even set a preset for yourself which is really, really cool, okay? So that's really nice to see. Um, you can do the same thing with the inspector. When you open up your inspector over here on the left-hand side of Studio One, you can tell it, what do you wanna see? What don't you wanna see? And you can uncheck and check boxes. Look over here on the left-hand side of the screen as I check and uncheck boxes here. You can see all that stuff kind of disappear and you could kind of tell it what you wanna do. If it's an instrument track, 
you can tell what you want to see the, in the inspector. This is an audio track. That's why nothing happens when I click instrument. Track control. Again, you'll see things are disappearing and coming in. Track notes, layers. So again, you can customize everything the way you want to see it in Studio One. If you don't use half of these things and you don't want to see it and get all cluttered and confusing, you want a more clean, simplistic look, this is the way to do it in the customization box. Again, brand new for Studio One 6. Same thing in the transport. Let's say you don't use MIDI. Let's get rid of the MIDI monitor. Let's say the performance. We don't need that. The cache activity. Do we care? Eh. Sample rate, we probably want record time. Secondary time display. Do we need two time displays? Well, you can have down here, Time displays, one in beats and bars, one in seconds. If you want to see both, that's cool. Uh, the loop range, we can get rid of the loop if we want. Sync to external devices. Uh, we don't have any external devices. Let's get rid of that. Time signature, uh, who needs that? Who cares about the time? Metronome, who cares about playing in time? Let's get rid of that. Key signature, let's get rid of that. Tempo, no, we want to keep tempo. So again, you can customize it, okay? In the browser, what do you want to see in the browser when you open up your browser? Instruments. Up, oh, let's go, it's, do we go here? Is this right? Instruments, it's along the top menu bar here. I would keep all of these checked personally. Uh, well, let's say you never use the pool, get rid of the pool. Let's say if you don't use the PreSonus shop, although you should. Again, we're looking at the top of the browser here, the top main menu here in the browser. Again, the cloud, we don't use that. Files, we don't use that. You get the idea. So the customization allows you to customize the way you want to see Studio One. Brand new for version six. That's awesome. I love it. Two more things I want to show you in this video. Adding tracks. This is really cool. We come up to the plus button in here. We say add tracks. We're going to get our add tracks dialog box, which they've dressed up and made it look a little bit nicer here. But one little thing they added down here was a thing called load track presets. This is really cool. Click on that. And let's say you're going to add an electric guitar track. You're going to record your electric guitar or maybe your drum kit, or maybe you're going to do a beat and have a vocal. Or maybe you're gonna do something hybrid, beats and vocals, instruments, acoustic drums, analog drums, bass. You get the idea. Let's pick electric guitar. Watch what happens. I'm gonna first, well, let me first put it down here at the bottom. I'm gonna make sure it goes to the bottom of the list here so you can see it. Load track presets, electric guitar, watch what happens. It adds an electric guitar track. Yeah, that's no big deal. That happened before, but watch what happens now if I were to open this up here, I'll extend the uh, mixer so you can see it. Over here on the uh, left, right hand side, it adds a tuner for us. It adds Ampire, our guitar amp sim, and it actually adds an analog delay that's bypass mode in case you want to add some delay to your guitar track. Very, 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 very cool. That again, just speeds up the workflow. And again, you can save these presets as your own. So if you have a specific, let's say you don't use Ampire, let's say you use Guitar Rig or Amplitude or one of those things, you can do that. Let's say you don't want this analog delay, you want a different delay, or you want to use the chorus pedal or something by PreSonus, whatever you want, you can do that. It makes your workflow and speeds up the workflow quite a bit. And that's what I love about it. All these little things are workflow, uh, Time savers, they speed up the workflows. What I really like about it, time is money. Last thing I'm gonna show you in this video is something that's very, very cool, is when you go to export your song. So if we come up here to song and we go to export mix down, we're gonna get the export mix down dialog box. There's one killer feature in here that is so relevant today, right underneath export range, the loudness area. So now, you can adjust the loudness, the overall volume of your musical masterpiece based on different streaming platforms. This is wonderful. If you're sending music to YouTube or you're sending music to Spotify or Apple Music or Amazon Music or whatever, they all have different requirements. And so they require that you send your uh, your music at a certain uh, loudness level. This will do it for you. So for example, if we go to Apple Music, it's gonna have max loudness at minus 16 LUFS, plus or minus one dB. But if we go to Netflix, the Netflix is negative 27, okay? Or if we go back to Amazon Alexa, negative 14. This is really, really cool. And this is also even 
more super cool, if that's a term, we're on Netflix here. Say you're working with video and you're working with audio and you're composing audio to film, which is another thing you could do in Studio One. We'll talk about that in a later video. Again, you can make sure your loudness is correct. So if you're sending your next musical masterpiece to Netflix, you'll make sure that the audio levels are correct. So that's another really cool, convenient feature in Studio One version six. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So that's it for today as far as these handful of tips. Make sure you check the link in the description box below because I'll have two or three other videos and I'll have a dedicated playlist for Studio One version six showing you more very useful workflow features that they added. Again, this is the most significant upgrade I've seen in Studio One in quite some time, especially for folks like me who focus more on mixing and doing those kinds of things. This is really, 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 really great. So once again, make sure you go to homerecordingmadeeasy.com. I'll leave a link in the description box below. If you're new to Studio One, make sure you check out my three brand new Studio One version six training courses for beginners. The Beginner's Guide, Mixing in Studio One, Recording in Studio One. You don't need any other software. You don't need to buy any third-party plugins. Everything is done inside of Studio One version six. Let me know if you've done your upgrade to Studio One version six. Leave comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And until the next video, I'm Dave with HomeRecordingMadeEasy.com. Thank you so very much for watching me today, everybody. Enjoy Studio One version six, and I'll see you in the next video.